welcome back. Okay, so this next podcast looks at um, <coughs> the the intensive negotiations uh, in the last week of January. Um, much of this was reported in the newspapers at the time. Um, uh, it was all very, very shabby, lots of secret deals, um, basically final moments uh, uh, by both von Papen and Hitler to sort of buy support for their proposal to make Hitler uh, Chancellor. Um, Hitler could see very, very well what was going on. Um, basically, um, uh, von Papen was, was trying to... Uh, the, the conversations were very much about uh, the other positions in the cabinet. Um, Hitler had been offered the top position, uh, the chancellorship, but the final, the, 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 the dotting the I's and crossing the T's now were about who would fill the other positions in the cabinet. Um, and I, now clearly von Papen, uh, his primary intention is to sort of box Hitler in, to surround, to surround Hitler with... Um, right-wing politicians who were not members of the Nazi party, in, the, in other words, members of his own um, circles, conservative elites, right-wing politicians um, who were conservatives, um, so that Hitler effectively can be controlled within the cabinet. Now, Hitler can, of course, see exactly what von Papen is up to. Um, von Papen, um, again, claimed to Hitler that it was important to have a cabinet that was representative of the views of the German public, and so, you know, that that was his justification for um, in, including non-Nazis in the cabinet. Um, so Hitler's playing along; he's playing the game. He he, ex um, uh, from Hitler's point of view, as long as the key positions in the cabinet, um, or the important ones, are held by Nazis. So lots of negotiations are sort of happening at this particular stage. Okay, so let's just go into the detail. Um, the wheeling and dealing. Um, over the next seven days, by the time we reach the sort of like final, um, the final few days in January, it, it pretty much the positions had been agreed. Okay, so it was agreed that the Nazis would hold three cabinet positions out of twelve. Okay, so Hitler as Chancellor. Now, of course, that one had been agreed at the beginning. Um, Frick as Minister of the Interior. Um, that one was um, fairly fierce argument and discuss uh, argument over that one. Um, Hugenberg, of course, the leader of the German Nationalist Party, wanted that position for himself. Um, so he and Hitler came to loggerheads over that one. Um, it was a fairly tense moment when it looked as if um, the German Nationalist Party were going to pull out of the negotiations. Of course, um, it was important that they be brought, that, that they be on board. Um, again, the whole plan is, is that Hitler can be a parliamentary chancellor, he can be a coalition chancellor, and of course the Nazis do need to have the support of the German Nationalists. Uh, inside the Reichstag. Um, eventually it was agreed that Hugenberg uh, would be the Minister of Economics. So he was bought off by being given the position of Minister of Economics um, and therefore a Nazi, Wilhelm Frick, was Minister of the Interior. Um, also, um, remember, the Minister of the Interior uh, was not as strong a position as uh, Hitler would have liked it to have been um, ministries of the interior controlled policing but actually policing was controlled by the different German state governments so the position of minister of the interior in the Reich government the central government was a fairly um, a, a relatively powerless position um, unless Hitler can find a way of taking policing away from the states and, and concentrating it in the hands of the um, the, the Reich government. Um, that is another story, of course. Hitler did find a way of doing that, um, um, but that, that's the story of the Reichstag fire decree, which will come later. Um, the other position that was held by the Nazis uh, was Goering, who was made minister without portfolio, which basically is a position on the cabinet, but without a ministry, without a particular brief. Um, so that, um, likewise, did not... Yeah, 
as far as von Papen was concerned, he he, he is offering hit, hit, Hitler positions uh, or Nazis position in the cabinet, which are relatively powerless. So it's all a way of convincing von Papen that basically he is boxing Hitler in, because the remaining cabinet positions uh, were held by conservative nationalists, um, non-Nazis, including Alfred Hugenberg, as we mentioned, and even the Ministry of Defence, which is a key ministry, was held by General von Blomberg. Another one that's not mentioned there um, was the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, which was held by a non-Nazi, um, Konstantin von, no uh, von Neurath. Um, if you go to Noakes and Pridham, um, chapter uh, 4, which you have, at the very end of that chapter, page 121 to 122, you'll find a full list of the cabinet positions and uh, which politicians um, would have which position. OK, so final point. Um, at the end of those protracted, rather shabby negotiations that were um, held secretly, but actually were rumoured about and reported in the press, it seems that um, the young Oscar von Hindenburg um, uh, was now fully brought around. If he had any doubts, and he probably didn't because of the Noydex scandal um, bribe that we mentioned in the previous podcast, it seems that um, these convinced him that uh, Hitler, if he were made Chancellor, could be boxed in would be controlled by the Conservatives. Uh, so the young Oscar von Hindenburg and von Papen himself are now pretty confident that they can go to President von Hindenburg and convince him, von Hindenburg that there is no risk of making... If, if Hitler is to be made Chancellor, there is no risk attached because Hitler can be controlled by the Conservatives that he would be surrounded by. OK, so that's the end of this podcast. Uh, we're nearly there. Hopefully, the sound quality has improved on this one. I'm not. I'm not using the the same microphone, um, so hopefully that will that that problem will have been sorted out. Thank you.